Welcome back. In this video, we're going to mount the optical tube assembly or telescope to most non astronomers to the tracking mount. If you haven't seen the previous video for setting up your mount, I'd recommend watching that video before watching this one. There's a lot more to come, including how to balance your telescope, how to accurately polar align, two star alignment with an additional star, and more as we delve into the exciting world, or should I say universe, of astrophotography. So if you haven't already, please subscribe down below and ding that little bell for the latest content. Now let's get started unpacking and setting up our optical tube. All right, I moved my uh, camera position just a little bit to take advantage of the light. I got this package later in the day than I expected, and I wanted to get this done today because it's fun and I'm excited. So this is the optical tube. I said before, most of us call this a telescope, but it's an OTA or optical tube assembly. And this is in particular is called a Schmidt Cassegrain, which basically means it's a Newtonian. Some astronomers are going to tell me I got this wrong, but it's a Newtonian reflector telescope that has a correcting lens on the uh, where the light enters to help fix co problems with corona and uh, color issues around bright objects as they get it magnified. So there's a corrective lens that's part of the Schmidt Cassegrain art. This is also an Edge HD. That is the viewfinder. It's an Edge HD, which uh, means it has um, better clarity around the edges so your images don't kind of warp towards the end or towards the outside of the image. I got this so I could start trying my hand at astrophotography and I thought it'd be fun to learn about the solar system and take some cool pictures along the way. And this is large. I did uh, buy a container that I think I can use to transport this and the, the shims for the preformed packaging might work out just well, but I did buy some stuff. I'm going to try to make a container to ship it or to uh, move it to locations to uh, image. Weighing in at 33 pounds, here is your Schmidt Cassegrain optical tube. How can I do this cleanly? I will say this is not very easy to handle for one person. This is big. Oh, speaking of handles, there's a handle that helps. Just to make sure the dovetails on there are secure. And it looks like it is. I make sure the Saddle is ready to accept this thing, so I'm just taking it out pretty wide. So I can get this in here. And I'm going to attempt to slide it right down. So I'm going to put this guy on as a stop. Let's see if I can make this work.
Okay, that was deceiving. There's a gap in here, but it's designed to allow you to get the uh, dovetail into the channel, into the saddle to make it easier to mount. That is mounted properly. So that is the 11 inch Edge HD telescopes. Now the next thing we have to do is balance it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the clutch. Actually, what I should have done probably is balance this first. Let me do that. Yeah, I'll do it this way. I want to make sure it's balanced. It's a little heavier that side because that's where the mirror is so i'm going to slide that forward just a little bit let's see if that was enough Looks like that was too much. I was getting the feeling that was a bad idea, so I stopped. And I think once I get this set up, I will mark the dovetail to make this easier to get back to in the field. Still a little front heavy. That's good, that's balanced. So now we're gonna balance it. I'm gonna turn that block a little more off. Just seems a little tight. I think there's actually an additional weight for the uh, bigger uh, tubes. And I imagine that's what this is. Absolutely is. If I said bigger, I should have said heavier weight or another additional weight. Because that thing was a little heavy. The mount's rated for a payload of 55 pounds. The uh, optical tube itself, I believe, is 33 pounds. So once you throw some camera gear on there, it's going to be pushing 38, 37, something like that. All right, let's see what that does. I thought I had it pretty well balanced actually with just the weights that were on it. But I will put all these on it since that's how it's made. It's 
a little tight. It's hard to balance because it's so tight, but I think it's pretty good. Let's lock that back in. All right, I'm going to do a little bit of handheld camera work so you can see what I'm doing up close, but I'm going to mount the finder scope uh, first. So the finder scope has a bracket with an O-ring that looks like this, and it's going to mount to these two screws, which I've already loosened. This came from the dealer, and the screws were tightened down. They should not have been, so I loosened them back up, but that can cause damage to your scope. So if you ever don't run, if you ever have it, no finder uh, scope on there, you don't have the bracket, don't tighten these two screws down because they can, uh, they can damage the mirror inside. So I'm going to take this bracket off just by loosening these thumb screws. Slide the bracket out and mount it. I need a screwdriver. Don't laugh at my screwdriver. I grabbed it out of a drawer. Now the bracket simply slides over front with the uh, alignment screws towards the back. You slide this straight down over the bracket, making sure it's in the bracket. And there's two detents that the two thrum screws will tighten into. And they self-center actually. There's a, a pointed spot in the detent, so it self-centers as, as you bring it in. So one of these boxes has my finder scope. I imagine it's this one. And for the finder scope, we're going to attach an O-ring and just slide this down towards the objective end of the scope. So that's going to mount right in there. Slide this guy. All right, so we're going to slide this guy down until it locks in. Pass the spring and start bringing these guys just till they make contact. So now I'll try to show that O ring again up close. This time with video. So my O-ring is in place. What I want to do is just push this down until it seats all the way around. So you see there's some right down there, but I'm going to push this down all the way around so that O-ring seats to keep the uh, finder scope in place. I'm going to have to do a little bit of work with two hands there, but you get the idea. All right, there's your finder scope. So you would actually align the scope with something visually on the ground, terrestrial. Uh, once you have that done, get it in the finder scope and fine tune the finder scope adjustments using your up, down, left, and right. And we will do that tomorrow when we have some sunlight. All right, so next up is to attach the uh, two inch star diagonal, which is gonna go right in here in place of this. So I'm gonna pull the back piece off right now. In fact, I'm gonna put this cover on first. I had to look in here to do something. It's a bayonet type or bayonet style cover. So once you put it in, rotate it and it locks in position.
That's the wrong piece. You want the two inch piece coming off, not the uh, big mount. So take this guy off. Your star diagonal goes in place just like that. This has an adapter on here for a inch and a quarter piece, which is what this is. So I could just leave this in here like I, like it is, or it has a two piece cover. I can use if I just use I can just leave this inch and a quarter adapter on here because it'll serve the same purpose. And that is a two inch eyepiece. I have inch and a quarter on an older telescope, piece of junk. I had no idea that a two inch eyepiece was that big. It's as big as my hand. <laughs> so this, this thing is huge. I'm gonna pull this off. You simply drop your eyepiece. Down in, tighten in place, and when you pull the cap off, and the other cap of course, you are ready for viewing. So there you have it, that's the optical tube assembly all set up. I'm still going to add a polar scope to it and um, mount that. And I might actually do that yet today or tomorrow when the light comes back. I might do it tomorrow when the light comes back. But there you go. 11-inch Celestron OTA or 11-inch Celestron Edge HD uh, on a CGX mount. Now that we have the optical tube assembly mounted with the finder scope, it's time to attach the tracking scope and tracking camera. Clicking the next video will take you right there. If you'd like to see me actually go out and capture some images of space, planets, and galaxies far, far away, just hit the subscribe button down below and ding that little bell to be notified when the new content is up and ready. Well, that's it for now. I hope you're looking forward to learning more about the night skies and what's really out there. I do hope you'll join me, and remember, we are all forever learning.